There is some information scattered along the internet claiming that a chemical known as TBHQ is a form of butane found in your food and is bad for you. This presentation will explain further about this. First of all, what is butane? Butane, if you don't know, which you probably do, is a gas often used as fuel for portable stoves. Butane is also a lighter fuel, in case you wanted to cook your steak with a Bic cigarette lighter. Butane doesn't make food taste good like charcoal, but is generally safe because virtually all of it burns off in the flame and won't make its way into your food if you use a pan or something to cook your food on, like any rational person does. As a gas, butane can be deadly when inhaled, so don't do that. That means you should also limit butane stoves to outside use. All of that said about butane, what does that have to do with TBHQ? Foodrepublic.com says TBHQ and butane are basically the same thing. CNN says TBHQ is just another form of butane, along with this change.org petition with a remarkable six signatures. Foodbabe.com also says it's a form of butane. Livestrong.com says the relationship between butane and TBHQ is overstated. Snopes discredited Foodbabe specifically, calling them a food alarmist and said it's not made from butane, but then Foodbabe refuted that claim, saying that Snopes' source of information is foodbusinessnews.net, which is industry funded, according to them. But foodbusinessnews.net also has an article reinforcing the same concerns Foodbabe spoke about. So based on that, I don't really know who to trust here, but here's the facts I could gather. They call it a form of butane because TBHQ literally stands for tertiary butyl hydroquinone or quinone or hydro qu something, something like that. The key term here is butyl, okay, butyl hydro blah blah, butyl, okay, butyl butane, you get what I'm saying here? Livestrong points out that the butyl just means a certain grouping of four carbons, which is also something you find normally in butter, which Snopes also happens to have mentioned. And that sounds pretty legitimate to me, so I think it's probably safe to say that TBHQ is not actually directly related to butane gas, or like butane and lighters, what we normally think. And at its core, all sources agree TBHQ is a synthetic antioxidant, and it has one real purpose, which is that it's a food preservative. Healthline.com says it's particularly used in fats, which seems mostly true, except foodbabe.com has a long list of places it can be found. That includes fat-free Hidden Valley Ranch, so I think the only way to really tell is check the label. Although, as I'll mention later, that's also not necessarily true. Most of the sources of this preservative do seem to be the same kinds of places as where people warn about finding trans fats though, so that's something to think about. Now, what does it do if you eat it is the real question. And the answer is Food Babe and Food Business News both cite research by a woman named Cheryl Rockwell that found TBHQ is linkable to changed T-cells behavior, T-cells being part of the immune system and that this could possibly be responsible for the production of proteins by those t-cells that can cause allergies in people now having discovered a while back that tick bites can cause red meat allergies this seems totally possible to me as well however this was written four years ago and the grant to fund research that would determine how much of this is true was a five-year grant so it's probably safe to assume nobody scientifically really knows what the link is exactly between allergies and TBHQ consumption. However, the possibility exists that the two are linked. So um, just you know, keep keep that sort of thing in mind when you eat the, the you know when you eat the chemical. Allergies set aside, though, enough of this preservative is most definitely toxic. The FDA specifies that acceptable intake is 0.02% of all oils in your food. And that really doesn't sound like a lot. Livestrong claims that five grams is a lethal dose. Lethal is a, a pretty pretty significant thing. Don't I would I would definitely try not to have five grams. Healthline, with citations to government research, states that it has been linked to tumors in rats as well as liver enlargement, neurotoxic effects, convulsions, and paralysis in laboratory animals. Um, none of those seem like good things. So yeah, Snopes and Food Bay both have stated that the preservative is banned in the entire country of Japan. Now that might be significant. Although Japan has also banned the sinus medication Sudafed and a stimulant regularly used in inhalers in the US, so take that for how you will. Whether or not it's linked to allergies and how much it actually affects the human body and in what dosages, some of that might be questionable, but when you put it all together, I think it's clearly something you ought to just avoid if you can. At the end of the day, the cleanest way to eat is to avoid processed foods entirely. But if you're going to be eating them anyway, TBHQ is often labeled. Although it very well might not be, there is a loophole where companies don't have to have it labeled. So you can definitely check the label to rule out certain products that do have it listed. But just because it's not on the label doesn't mean it's not there. That said, as I mentioned before, usually products that are processed foods containing fats are most likely to be the ones that might have it. 
So just limit your overall intake of those things, which you probably should be doing anyway. That would include cookies, crackers, frozen foods, fast foods, and things like that. That's basically all I have to say on the subject of TBHQ. I think in the future we'll have less of this, but it's a good thing to be aware of and definitely always read your labels. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk and have a beautiful day inside while also avoiding civilization.